from the pounding on the pavement. But I will say real quick, all right, here we go. Runner up, runner up. Onward and upward, onward and upward. Here we go into studio. Oh man, there's the shoes behind me. Thank you for your patience. Just a lot of testing, a lot of testing in 2020. So, I'll, I mean, can you imagine? Like last year, this was not happening. All these carbon fiber plate marathon racing shoes coming on the scene, but in 2020, it went down. Sadly, a lot of races were canceled, but yes, question of the day. Here we go. What is going to be your marathon race of 2021? Okay, that's option one. Option two, what is your bucket list marathon race that you want to do in the next five years? All right, dream big, think outside the box. That is the question of the day as we dive in here. So um, let's see, I think we've got nine shoes. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, nine shoes as well. At the end of the vlog, I will give a couple shoes that are a little more value-based. So if you don't want to go out and spend quite as, mu as much money as many of these shoes cost, I'll give a couple ideas for some value buys. Um, and then also, I created a new playlist on the channel, okay? So I've been publishing, I don't know, maybe four or five, six Matrix vlogs. That's what this is, where I basically try to compile all the shoes for a particular distance that you're racing or from a particular company. For example, I've made a Nike running shoe playlist of 2020. I've made Adidas. Um, and then a couple days ago, I made a road training shoe matrix for late 2020. So all of those playlists, or sorry, all of those vlogs are now listed in one playlist upper right hand corner if you want to go dive deeper um, I have another play if you want to dive into the full review or first impression vlogs for all of these shoes um, I have a carbon fiber plate racing shoe playlist upper right hand corner now as I'm thinking about what shoe I would want to purchase for a next road marathon race I'm breaking it down really into two areas energy return from the shoe specifically from the midsole okay energy return what am i getting back from the shoe through my gait cycle through the foot strike how is it responding to my personal biomechanics okay that's really key my personal bio because we all have really we all have different biomechanics um they can be very similar but they're all very uniquely and fine-tuned okay so that's point number one point number two is which uh, midsole specifically um, is going to save my legs for later in the race. So after 20 miles, specifically for me, I have noticed in my marathon racing and training, but especially racing um, after 21, 22 miles, that's really where my legs start to bark at me. So the last four miles, which shoe is going to help me get through those miles, meaning my legs are not as beat up from the previous 20 to 22 miles of pounding on the pavement. So that's really what I'm thinking about before I buy a marathon racing shoe. Also, let's keep rolling here, uh, breaking the shoes down real quickly here by weight. So for me, and somebody asked me on Twitter the other day, Seth, does the weight of the shoe really matter? And it really does. Okay, so think of the science behind this. Um, you're taking, I think it's roughly, roughly around 40,000 steps in a marathon race. Again, everyone's biomechanics are different. Uh, but if you think about an ounce different in a shoe, multiplied by 40,000 steps, that starts to add up very, very quickly. Okay, so there you go on your screen. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, Nike next percent at the top of the list. Asics Meta Racer next, followed by the New Balance Fuel Cell RC Elite, the Endorphin Pro, Alpha Fly Rocket X, Hyperion Elite 2, uh, rounded out by the Adidas shoes, okay? So I'll, I'll leave this on the screen just for a second so you can soak in those numbers. And yes, it is in, in grams as well. I should also mention, this is my size. So I just spent like the last hour breaking down the shoes inside my house. So this is my size seven and a half US. I decided to go my size since I own the shoes so I can weigh them right in front of you, okay? You absorbing those numbers? Look good, look good. Okay, moving on. All right, now this is not a scientific test, all right? I just wanna be clear about that. Not scientific, the durometer test. There is actually a machine out there that you can purchase to test 
the durometer, which basically is the like the softness scale. So uh, when I'm talking about the durometer, I'm talking about the midsole. So how easy or yeah, how easy it is it is it for me to stick my thumbs into that midsole foam, okay? And uh, so because if it's a firm landing, uh, you might like a firm landing for a marathon shoe, you might like a middle of the road, or you might like a soft landing, okay? So based on my unscientific test inside the kitchen, uh, my durometer the, uh, from uh, the softest first at the top of the screen there. So the New Balance Fuel Cell RC Elite, yes, for me, is definitely coming in as the softest. Oh my goodness. It is 100% the softest landing for 2020 carbon fiber plate marathon racing shoes. The New Balance Fuel, I and mean, it's, it's kind of fun, everybody. It's a fun, fun shoe. The New Balance Fuel Cell RC Elite. All right, going down the list. Here's the entire list in front of you. So yes, the Adidas Adi Zero Pro is coming in as the, I don't want to say stiffest, but the uh, kind of the densest feel uh, when I'm sticking my thumbs into that midsole okay and of course like the meta racer actually is a little soft in the heel but under the forefoot so it's a little it's tough but it's a little it's a it's quite a bit more firm under the uh, under the forefoot be, uh, compared to the heel all right so there's my durometer scale there for you um nike alpha fly next percent is actually pretty soft softer than the nike next percent all right there you go moving on now to the next one. Oh, I know nobody likes me doing this but yes the plate test i had to do it uh so it's the plate combined with the foam so as you're just bending that foam and bending that uh that midsole just to see uh how does the plate feel underfoot does it feel stiff does it feel not as stiff does it feel like it's got some good energy return what does it feel like underfoot um so again there it is on your screen this is the rating that i came up with again it's not scientific there are machines out there that i don't own yet that someday i'll be able to test how rigid rigid or how stiff um, or and eventually how much energy return these carbon fiber plates actually have but I don't own that machine yet so I have to go unscientific and just bend it for you inside the house in my kitchen okay so there they are Asics Meta Racer is actually coming in as the easiest kind of surprising okay a little bit of a little bit of that is because the midsole stack height is not very high and then all the way down yes again to the uh, that's is why uh it just is too, uh, for me personally, the Audios Pro is just a little too rigid, a little too stiff as you're bending that midsole. So, but again, some people like that feel underfoot, especially for a racer, okay? Compared to, for example, uh, this guy might be the Fuel Cell RC Elite, might be a little too soft for some people's likings for a racing shoe. Okay, moving on to the stack height. There it is, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Asics Meta Racer coming in as the lowest stack height, 30 millimeters in the heel, all the way down to 40 millimeters. Where is it? There it is, the Alpha Fly and the Next Percent, and actually, yes, the Audios Pro from Adidas. Okay, so these three are the highest at 40, 40 millimeters. There's the drop as well on your screen. So kind of interesting, really. If you, I'll let, I'll leave it up on the screen for a second so you can break down. Um, you know, like it's interesting, the Hoka Rocket X is a five drop. That's, uh, is that the lowest? Yeah, that's the lowest. No, 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 sorry. I guess it looks like the Alpha, the Alpha Fly is the, is the lowest drop. So anyway, um, there's the drop and there's the stack heights for all of these carbon fiber plate marathon racing shoes. Okay, moving on. Here we go to the price point. Oh boy, big time here. Now, I don't know what's gonna happen. I personally think, oh man, like I don't know how much more they're gonna be able to push that price up. Like going from 250 from the next percent to 275 in the Alpha Fly. Man, if it goes up again in 2021, like I hope it does not. In fact, just so everybody knows, I think in the 2021, uh, because the Olympics were pushed, I think this shoe, the Alpha Fly, is actually gonna be updated again for the next Olympics is my prediction. I don't know, that's just what my gut is telling me, but there's all the prices on your screen. The Adidas Adi Zero Pro is the, and the Hoka Rocket X, both coming in at 100. 
and $79. And I guess I should mention right now, since we're on the topic, the Audi Zero Pro, here it is up there. Do I have another one that I can hold? There it is, the Audi Zero Pro. I'm actually, I struggled. This shoe is almost just a half marathon shoe. Just the stack height is just not quite there. What is it coming in at? 32 and 22. And actually, I struggle with the Meta Racer as well. I'm it, it, these are borderline, but and we'll get to ground contact in a minute. If you like ground contact feel for it and you don't like to be too high off the ground, or if your marathon race has a lot of sharp corners and you don't like to feel unstable with such tall stack heights in some of these shoes. Uh, like turning those corners, yeah, you can feel a little unstable at times, then here we go, lower stack height in both of these shoes. And that is why actually also the Skechers shoes of 2020 that I've tested, like the Skechers Razor Elite uh, 3, or Razor 3 Elite, as well as the GoMeb Speed 6, I, I did not put those in the marathon category because the stack height is just a little lean. Um, so it was tough, but I'm actually putting these a little bit closer into the half marathon distance. And guess what? I should probably make a half marathon matrix blog very, very soon. How does that sound? Let me know in the comment, comments if that would help you. Maybe after my half marathon in January, I will work on that. Okay, there you go. There's the price once again. Now let's jump up real quick to the actual matrix, combining them into uh, the ride and landing underfoot. Okay, so the softest, of course, is going to be that New Balance Fuel Cell RC Elite, 100%. The firmer landing is going to be, yeah, crazy. Where is it? Where is it? Well, I'm not finding it. Here it is on the shelf. The Hoka Rocket X. Just that EVA midsole, it's a firm landing. And uh, yeah, I'm not saying it's bad, but it's it, it's not my number one choice for racing, the Hoka Rocket X. It wouldn't be my number one choice, but um, yeah, that EVA midsole is just a little firm underfoot. Okay, moving on to ground contact, 100% that. Oh, where'd it go, where'd it go? There it is, 100% that Meta Racer from ASICS. And then responsive and snappy, oh yeah, the Nike Next Percent. Yep, no doubt about it. Very snappy underfoot. Uh, that plate, I think, is positioned well. I think it's a good size plate, meaning the width of the, remember, oh, there, where is it? Oh, there it is. Remember, we did a little deconstruction there. So there's the inside of the next percent. And I was able to see the actual plate. It's in a box right below me. Um, so I think that they really nailed it with the actual design of the plate in the uh, next percent. And moving on to re energy return and bounce is gonna be the Alpha Fly. Yeah, I mean, these AirPods under the forefoot, it's, boun it's bouncy. It's very bouncy. Uh, yeah, it's just, just, just very, very, there's uh, no other contender for a bounce and energy return feel. Okay, but you're probably wondering, all right, Seth, who is going to win? Who would I choose? Which shoe would I choose if I could only pick one uh, to race in right now for a marathon? It's going to be the next percent. Yes, indeed. Okay, even though even though the Alpha Fly is coming in with more energy return, a bouncier ride, which I actually like a lot, um, this guy, because there's other, you, you have to think the whole picture with a shoe, this guy just was, it felt way, and actually I have a clip I'm gonna show you in a second. It felt way too, um, it felt kind of like a boat. That's how I described it in the full review vlog. It feels like a boat underfoot, just a little too um, big, a little too much volume to the shoe. So that is why I love the next percent. And I said this about six months ago when I compared these two shoes in a vlog, and I almost felt a little silly saying it, but I'm glad I stuck to my guns. Um, well, let's just roll the tape. I repeat to myself all the time is quick feet, quick feet, quick feet. And so I'm going with the Nike next percent for the shoe that I would choose for New York City, okay? Why? Mostly because of weight. Yeah. Um, and I will say I'm a little disappointed in the resilience thus far. Um, you know, only 72 miles in and I could notice a distinct difference uh, coming out of the box compared to where it is at right now. So there you go. Nike next percent. Again, six months later, I still am sticking with it. And I, I'm sorry, but like no other company yet has been able to compete 
with a 2019 shoe. Again, getting back to the weight, this guy is the lightest out of all of the ones that I own and uh, even lighter than the Meta Racer. Uh, gosh, so, you know, it's, I don't know. We'll see what 2021 holds as far as all these companies trying to update and innovate and uh, create more energy return, lighter shoes, and but still enough midsole to protect our legs from the pounding on the pavement. But I will say real quick, all right, here we go. Runner up, runner up, Saucony Endorphin Pro, okay? Runner up would be Saucony Endorphin Pro for me. I struggled though. This guy was the, the New Balance Fuel Cell RC Elite would be third place, okay? So it'd be Nike Next Percent, Saucony Endorphin Pro, and then New Balance Fuel Cell um, RC Elite, and last but not least, as far as value goes, if you want to save money, we all want to save money, the Saucony Endorphin Speed, of course, that's why I put it into the one shoe I would save and keep in the studio if I, if I could only pick one, Saucony Endorphin Speed, and yes, I'm going to say the Asics Nova Blast, if you really want to save money, this shoe, now it's a little heavy, but this shoe would absolutely protect your legs enough for a marathon distance and <coughs> Excuse me. It has enough bounce through that midsole to get you through 26 miles. Now, it wouldn't be my first choice, of course, but as far as value goes, and there's the price on your screen, Asics Nova Blast, and watch out, winner, winner, chicken dinner, the Hoka Mach 4 is also, oh my goodness, this shoe, how much does this shoe weigh? Hold on, everybody. This shoe is a training shoe. But I think a lot of people are going to buy this shoe. Now, it's not available yet. It's not available till March, I do believe. Uh, but I think people will be able to buy this shoe to train in and to race in, okay? Hold on. Let me just take out this real quick, and let's put it on the scale. So, everyone, I know, uh, let me know in the comments what you think about, yeah, 7.6. So, it is, um, it's actually about an ounce lighter than the Asics Nova Blast. But the Nova Blast is uh, available. This guy is not yet. Onward and upward, there you go. Marathon racing shoe matrix in the books for 2020. And we'll see what 2021 holds. I mean, I think all of us, we just are so excited to get back to a starting line, uh, to push ourselves. But frankly, everybody, I just want to go talk to some other runners. Like, you know, at the starting line, at the finish line, warming up, at the awards, Sarah. I just want to talk to runners. Like, you know us runners, we just, uh, it's like, some people don't understand what we do as runners. Like, why would you actually go pay to put yourself through pain? And like, so we, we get it, but we haven't been able to really see each other as much in person in 2020. So I'm excited and I hope this helps. There you go. Oh my goodness. So much goodness, but uh, we'll see what happens in the future. All right, everyone, we'll toss it to the uh, new new matrix. The uh, mate, All the matrix vlogs will be on this playlist right here, right here. Onward and upward. Keep buttering, everybody. All right, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.